from the University of Navarra, Spain. They will explain to you their solution to tackle food waste. Mm -hmm. Good luck and we can start. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. I want to start saying that uh, despite I've been grown and lived in the city for my whole life, I've also been lucky enough to enjoy the countryside of my homeland since my mom comes from there. What that means is that I've seen hard men at work 24-7 with no schedule, didn't matter if it was Sunday, working very hard to provide for their families. But what I have also seen is them throw away piles and piles of their work just as it was done, work that could actually, that is perfectly fine, has no issues with it, but they saw their work out of the, out of the window every single time. And this astounded me very much. So I gather a team in order to look far into the issue and see if there was a social business approach we could have to solve this issue. So uh, we're the recovery project and we're here to invite you, all of you, to change the world with us today. Okay, I would like to draw your attention to the left part of this graph. Though that big green circle represents total food production in the world. Out of everything that is produced, 17.3% is considered not edible. <coughs> what does that mean? That means that according to uh, global health standards, it's not safe for consumption or utilization in some other industries. So that food is the one that is damaged in the field by animal water damage and cannot be eaten. I, the rest is perfectly fine with it and can be used. And all, out of the edible food, 80% is utilized. What does that mean? That means that it's directly sold uh, to the consumer via supermarket, wholesale, and other means of selling, or is used in, in making products uh, that use fruits and vegetables or whatever other type of food. However, 20% is what we call cosmetically challenged. What does that mean? That means that uh, the produce has some cosmetic defect, can it be color, shape, curvature, and farmers have no way to put that produce into the, into the, into the market because private companies have the money to simply waste or buy the other products and that gets thrown away. That red box of there is what we want to tackle and our presentation <coughs> is going to be oriented around that part. So initially we wanted to come in, thank you, we wanted to come in and do a global study of food wastage to get around normal number. So what we came up with is that 20 to 33 percent of food is wasted even before it gets on people's tables. What does this mean? That about 775 trillion metric tons of food is wasted annually of 16 fruits and vegetables that we study. That means that 1.4 billion hectares of land is unutilized or utilized improperly. 
Also 7,300 billion gallons of water is misused. And if we were to take the greenhouse emissions from that waste, it would be number three on a chart after China and the United States of America. So I want you to take a good look at this number. And this number represents 30 billion pounds of food wasted in the United States of America alone and is the food of the products that we want to utilize and want to help farmers uh, harness. So to do this, we decided to come in and see what's the feasibility of our project. How well can we implement it? And uh, we did a little bit of market research on it. And I'd like you to look at this chart of this dollar bill here. And I'd like you to see just how little producers in the green, highlighted in the green, make. They make 9.1 cents on the dollar for the food <coughs> that, they, um, that they produce. And this is from data collected by uh, the USDA. Um, compared to what sellers make, which is a lot more. And what we want to exemplify here is that we want to help farmers harness the income that they can make from the food that is wasted and increase their income, expand that <coughs> 9.1 cents on the dollar compared to what sellers make. So what does this really mean? What's the important number? We're talking about a $40 billion industry in the United States of America alone with the produce, this cosmetically challenged produce that we want to harness. That's a big number and that's a lot of money and it also means it's a lot of food wasted. Okay, so basically after doing this feasibility, we wanted to see if somebody was already tackling the issue, if there was a space in the market for us to jump in. And we basically analyzed the three main competitors that you can see in the screen. And we came to the realization that they offer luxury goods. It seems that uh, imperfect products, can it be organic or not, it's aimed to those who want to have a consensuous way of eating, but are willing to pay extra for it. Just as what we have, like fair commerce kind of thing. And also they don't really have that much variety since all of them, they basically provide this type of product, which is produce boxes. They just make small boxes that you could deliver to your place at a high cost in comparison to what would you pay in the supermarket or in any other country or market. What we want to do is actually differentiate. We believe that produce boxes are very useful and we intend to solve the products, but we want also to put our main focus on elaborated products because we believe that turning that ugly apple or that funny looking tomato <coughs> you don't want to eat into something that you will regard as normal actually has a great impact in the market and more possibilities uh, of being sold. So where do we step in? This is just a basic chart of the food, pro of the food process uh, from the field to the store. And we simply want to keep doing that. We want to keep the work just uh, where farmers left it right after production uh, and collection and process it and turn it into consumer products and things that everybody can use. Can it be individuals? or companies as their inputs in their processes. So this is where we step in. We're a recovery project and we plan to show you how we're gonna harness this wasted food and how we're gonna do it. We're a team of four people all coming as we've already been introduced from the University of Navarra in Spain and we have experience in working in or with, I better said, uh, KPMG uh, Oliver Wyman in the United Nations and for this reason I feel we have adequate experience to tackle the problem. Okay, so what is that we actually want to do? You might be wondering what's all this recovery project all about? We basically have a two-part business solution to tackle uh, this problem. The first one is called Connect. Connect, it's all about uh, establishing uh, direct connections or relationship between the supply and the demand <coughs> part of the market. What that ultimately means is giving a quick way out to produce via selling it in bulk. Can it be if you have a vast organization that uses that or uh, to any other one that would be interested in having it? The second part of our business solution is called Transform. Transform actually entails us, as a recovery project, as a company, buying that imperfect product and turning it into something that we believe has uh, a market uh, in, in which pe to penetrate. And by combining these two part solution, we expect to fulfill our goal of bringing fresh, perfectly edible food 
at a reduced price, a close to customers and have a positive impact in the world, both by reducing waste and helping <coughs> farmers communities that uh, struggle with the issue. So the markets that we want to penetrate into are the United States, the UK, and Northern Europe because they have a vast quantity of produce that is projected based on our studies. And also in their society, we've been able to see that they're comfortable with buying things online. They already have this working with them. They're people who buy things online. So we know that with a platform, we could be able to penetrate into <coughs> the market. So regarding our value proposition canvas, once we sat down and tried to analyze the business, we realized we were, in order to survive, we were basically aiming to those looking uh, for affordable, healthy food, those that look for convenience and also have other things into account. However, these kind of people usually experience difficulties such as high costs, uh, short lifespan of product because of the time of the big process it has already been going, <coughs> and that is your fruit dying in your fridge three or four days after as well as in some cases the artificial nature because of the uh, industrial production of food that takes place in some cases. And also we believe that by our solution they can get, uh, they can acquire a conscientious way of eating, both in terms of health and social impact, also uh, get the similar product but cheaper, and also for companies have more opportunities to develop given lowering costs in their operations. So after doing this we came up with our target, and that's basically individuals, primarily millennials, people that have, as my colleagues playing, an already online kind of shopping culture established, and also low-income individuals that may choose other choices as of now, because even though they want to eat healthier, for example, they may not have the actual resources to do so on a daily basis. Also, we think we can tackle companies and restaurants, since they put uh, their fruits and vegetables as inputs, and or perhaps they just want to start their own branches or their own uh, divisions with these products in the future. And also organizations such as food banks or camps that already buy in wholesale and could very much benefit from this initiative in order to fulfill their own economic and social goals. So how does the kick part of our business plan work? What we plan to do is locate local farmers and producers of agriculture, of the fruits and vegetables that we specifically want to harness. We want to be able to help them find customers so that they can sell these wholesale, wholesale through an online platform that sells these, that supports these transactions. And by doing so, we hope to receive real-time feedback from the customers and be able to work with the producers to better the experience for the people who buy from them. And why would producers initially even want to work with us? It's simple. They'll get more income. They'll turn that waste that they have into profit for themselves and also reduce the cost of getting rid of waste in fields. And by doing so, we hope to develop a community uh, that sees a profit increase and also in our philosophy of not wasting food. We hope to do this, as I've said before, using an online platform that we've already calculated specific costs for, including uh, how to get it up and running, etc. It'll be in real time, it'll be controlled by the producers, it'll be easy to use, and it'll be on a variety of platforms such as Android, iOS, and uh, web-based applications for Safari, Firefox, etc. Well, we also believe that since we're tackling this specific target, we believe that it is important to get the movement jump started because it's not it's it's beginning but it's not died on the map yet. So we believe that we have to accompany our solution and in the connect part with a strong social media approach by which we can have better communication between both sides and ultimately get give, uh, give customers the opportunity to see how their purchases, how their money is actually translated into community development and by that we can actually measure our social impact also and by that ultimately generate inertia around the movement making it bigger putting ourselves as well as other companies that also want to have a social impact on the map and overall increasing the brand loyalty and getting a pool of customers that we can really work with and from them evolve to further steps 
So now turning on to the second part of the of our solution, it's pretty simple as I previously stated, it's just transform. It's by the produce ourselves, our company directly uh, from them and turn it into products that we can use and sell via retail stores uh, such as already happens in the industry. So to give an example of our transform aspect of differentiating ourselves from our competitors, we plan to elaborate pre-made uh, products to be sold in uh, retailers. You can see here we have a little prototype thrown up of juice that we've also calculated the production costs on and the startup cost. If you'd like to ask about that. And we feel that this would be a way to get us away from our competitors. Okay, so talking about our partners, we have established contact with public organizations such as the USDA and the, uh, the Foreign Ministry of Cooperation in Spain, and they have given us insights on how to, uh, how to shape our business in the needs of the producer side, meaning uh, producers, uh, uh, lobbies, and so on. Also on the private side, via supermarket brands such as Eroski and Floret, and we have also partnered with Slow Food, which is uh, the biggest organization regarding conscientious eating, and they have shown further interest in uh, supporting us in the future. So this is basically our timeline. We were born this year, and we're preaching for here you today, and we plan between this year and next establish and start generating this inertia we need around the movement. By doing that, uh, actually gaining, uh, start getting profits between 2017, 2018, and get success and building these two years the solid base that we need to, go to grow from. So basically, to summarize and to bring everything together, what we want to do is we want to bring this fresh, perfectly edible produce that is wasted and we want to monetize it by helping farmers putting money as well in their pockets as reducing the normal price of the food. We want to do this in two ways, by connecting directly with retailers through our online pro platform so that farmers can put this up for whole wholesale and also by elaborating different uh, types of products, which, which I've uh, stated before. And we want to help raise awareness about this problem <coughs> and also expand the different uh, communities and markets. <coughs> Thank you. We are Recovery Project and we appreciate your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now we can take a few questions. Thank you. Uh, regarding the, the products that you are aiming to create, uh, I have seen some, uh, it was some, some juices, no? Yeah. Juices. Can you talk a little uh, a bit more about those? products or another product that you are aiming to transform? Yeah, I will. Um, it will take me a minute, sorry about that. Sorry. Yeah, it takes. Well, maybe I can go into it as my colleague uh, tries to find the slide. Uh, basically, uh, the juices, as we've stated before, we have the two sides. We have uh, the connect through our platform, but also we plan on differentiating ourselves from our competitors by making pre-elaborated um, items. Because as you can see in the chart, all they sell is whole food, uh, they sell boxes of produce uh, with the price ranges you can see below. And we plan to differentiate ourselves through our pre-elaborated products. Now we've looked at how to pretty much penetrate initially into the, product, uh, into, uh, the market, and uh, we've calculated um, uh, prices on how to elaborate uh, these juices and uh, things like that. So we already have pretty much how much it's going to cost us. I'm not sure if you want to see that. You can a little bit into the yeah. Well, because basically, uh, we conducted the studies for juices uh, at first because uh, it is actually a booming market, having people from industries as the tobacco one switching now. Uh, and basically, we calculated that for a bottle of the average size of press cold juice, you would actually pay in a retail right now, let's say for a juice like Naked in the US, you can end up paying like $6, $7, something like that. And, and we're talking about um, items that are considered, uh, you know, good, you know, not the stuff that is wasted. And we calculated that just normal juice, the normal stuff that's not the wasted juice has a production value of about $1.95. So we think that Ours could be a lot cheaper, and that we could sell it in retailers for much less 
uh, even to break even or create excess profit? Actually, just to give the figure, the break even price was for $30. And that's for normal juices, that's not the stuff we want to harness. Uh, do you have, apart from uh, the juices, any other products? Or do you well, it's, we also plan to do salads We're and smoothies. Yes. Uh, the thing is, we have not yet done uh, the previous studies to it. Salads, we know it's, it's, uh, it's feasible. Uh, the, because the cost is way lower than for juices, the production is lower, and as much as we have to look into it still. Yes. Have you calculated the, the transformation costs and of this whole thing? Oh, of the of the well of, of we, the juices. Well, <laughs> sorry, it's okay. <laughs> we do have. Do, do you want to see? We have for juices the actual slide with the cost. I can show that to you. Would you like to see that? It's okay. No, no. All right. Okay. The, 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 we're we're the, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, in a world <laughs> where uh, the production is right now very challenging where we see Californian drops, where we yes. see the impact that conventional agriculture is having on the soil, yeah. where we have uh, in the United States, the producer are not all small farmers, they are yeah. major corporations. Uh, and you, your competition, uh, uh, I think is very, very, uh, I like your presentation, but the, the competition part here is very uh, underestimated, I think. How can you imagine that you will sustain a business uh, with low price? It's like uh, people will always give you food yeah. to produce, and at the same time, uh, we see that uh, even grocery stores are uh, tending to promote comestically challenged uh, vegetables to be eaten and sold in the in, in these industries, how can you imagine that people would drink maybe non-bio, uh, <coughs> non-organic uh, juice and secured on, a, on a, a gift economy? Yeah, that's a very good question and actually the moment I presented the idea, actually the supermarket we were talking to, they had like their own thingy and we went to talk to them and it turned out it was just a wash face. Basically they have a big post outside, a let's say three trails of cosmetic challenge vegetables and fruits. But as they told me, they are not making any money with it. They don't want to make any money with it. It's just, if she's a consumer, you're gonna like me more because I'm helping people and I'm helping the environment. But that's what they want to do. They don't really plan to have a sustainable business out of it. Just simply look good to the outside. We believe that I, in the first stage, We'll have to work local, and local does not mean a small farmer. Local means I cannot expect to get the produce in the Midwest and ship it all the way across the country to uh, process it because it wouldn't be effective. So we believe that at first we have to uh, work the logistics in order for us to get the produce and process as quick uh, and as we can. And yes, as the others do in the industry, provide uses. And regarding the organic, for example, part of the question you had. We are not directly aiming as organic because that's a whole market. I mean, there's cosmetically challenged products that is organic, but organic is a luxury good per se because it's not accessible to everybody. In for I mean, in the studies we've conducted, so we want to just give the stuff that already is there a reduced price and help just farmers get what uh, at least what they would get something. To cover the cost and, and to clarify a little bit more of uh, your question I, I we might have not uh, stated it quite clearly we're not working on a gift based basis we're working on helping the farmers to get more money with uh, a commission uh, things like that we want to pay them for their cosmetic we want to give them incentive to give it to us we're not expecting farmers to go well you know just give them the food we're expecting them also to get money back from what we take. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you tapped on it just a little bit. Just this is a basic question, but to avoid doing waste yourselves, um, how would that work? The transformation part, where would it be, or how do you like project? Like, uh, okay, so the, the idea is to contact. Uh, we have to get the producers, and producers uh, can be very small. Can be a farm, which it's not really that small because they can have truckloads of produce. And it can also be an industrial producer. Basically, we have to contact them. That's what we established with the USDA. We want to see who wastes where. 
And from there, just work the logistics on getting that produce. Because the shipping costs they already have, because if they have to give it uh, to take it to a landfill, they have to pay the truck for that. So basically, it's paying the truck to where we want to process. And of course, we're not aiming to process it ourselves at first. That means that is jobs that should be outsourced. Because at first, at the beginning, we cannot aim. I I'm not here to present you. I want to get a factory and make my own juice, because that would be completely unrealistic. So what we aim to do is outsource that till we start generating enough momentum to actually perhaps take a, a tighter hold of those parts of the process in the industry. So you will take into consideration the transportation part? I mean, it's yes, yes, we have already taken that, yes. For, for the juices, at least, we know that it costs between 150 to $500 for a, a pallet of the, the fruit to be shipped across the United States. So we have that taken into consideration. The transportation cost does not suppose let's say, a red barrier that we can cross. Mm -hmm. We thought that that would be a real issue, but the industry is very, it moves very quick. There's a lot of shippings every day and the volume is very big. So we believe that yes, redirecting some, a, a little flow of that volume uh, is perfectly feasible according to the cost structure of the business. But how do you differentiate yourselves from a juice producer? We're, we're cheaper. But you, uh, buying the same resource, you will contribute to augment the demand on these uh, these vegetables. Uh, well, I, we're buying the produce that the juice company does not want, because even juice companies don't take that part. A, a very small part of what's cosmetically challenged goes to jam companies, basically fruit, and a little tiny bit goes to food banks, but they don't really have the it's donated, but they don't have the infrastructure to why, manage it. Why do they not want this project? the juice companies and why would you be able to make better juice or as much juice at a, at a better price than they, they would be? Well, we believe that it, it's simply our product has a start cost of zero, basically. We, every <coughs> we get the farmer from zero up, they are happy to. Otherwise, in Spain, for example, I've had in Madrid a protest of producers throwing oranges in the street. That's how bad the situation is in some cases. <coughs> so we believe that reducing that cost structure and providing a social impact to the juice, like if I tell you this use is very similar to this one, but if you buy this one, you can see on your phone how a farmer is gonna. Uh, in this production. part I, I understand it all. I just don't see where is the difference or why the juice buyer is not buying this orange and you would make good juice at the. the this is where I am uh, lost a bit of this. Time is over. It's okay. okay. We, we, no, we, we, we can talk it right after us if you'd like. Okay, it's okay. But if we have one question, a couple of questions. A little bit uh, last, if I have time. <laughs> what social impact are you aiming for the first year? Uh, for the first year? Uh, it's basically, it, it's not that big given the infrastructure we want to build, but uh, after studying it and talking about it, which was a really big problem, we aim to simply uh, provide farmers with more stability regarding the, the amount of money they get because they have like a very wide range of money and they don't know where they're going to be. We want to shorten that so they can perhaps get more equipment, more land, and just help their own communities at a local level at first. Thank you very much. I think that at the end you can continue to discuss. Okay. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.